Hey, we're the Sheelys. Hey. Welcome to the Daily Bread Podcast. Yeah, we're going to talk about all things ministry, music, family, creativity, and maybe even a little fashion. Yay, hope you enjoy the show. Hello, friends. Hello. Welcome to the Daily Bread Podcast. Yay. <laughs> we are the <laughs> Sheelys. And this is our one chance to grab your attention and hook you in to come back episode after episode. So, How's it working? How's it working? <laughs> no, we're excited to be doing this. Uh, episode one of the Daily Bread podcast brought to you from our living room, our yep. home here in Atlanta, Georgia. Here we are. We are going to open this entire podcast up by just talking a little bit about our story who we are, what we do, how long we've been doing this, living this crazy life. We are a family of six. Yes. We have four beautiful kids. They are One three. boy, three girls. <laughs> I was going to say, we are swimming in a sea of estrogen in this house. Hallelujah. Tonight, specifically, felt as if the <clears throat> levels rose. They did. The, the tide was <laughs> rising. <laughs> the estrogen tides in the Sheely household. So we are here to tell you that you can love Jesus, survive the sea of estrogen. Yeah. And still manage to be relatively creative. Stay married and love your kids. Yes. And um, still sit down. Now, as for me and Judith's uh, survival of the fittest, um, we're going to make it through. But no, we are the Sheelys. Family of six, four beautiful kids, three to 13. Our son is turning 13. Yay. We have been married. This will be our 19th year. In July. In July. Um, we've been leading worship pretty much the majority of that time. Uh, oh. We have been on and off of staff at churches. We've been volunteers. We've been musicians just doing it for the fun of it. And so we're going to tell you a little bit about that story, the origin stories of how the Sheelys got to where they are today. It's a crazy story. Go ahead. Why don't you tell them where we met and how you loved me the second you saw I me? I think you should start. Should. <laughs> but you want my version of this story? Because it's going to make me look really awesome. Well, how we met really is more to do with you. is nothing to do with me. <laughs> I was, I didn't have a choice. My parents took a job. I'm from <clears throat> Texas. My family's from Texas. And my parents took a job at a church um, in the town that he was from in South Carolina. So yeah. we were moving from Texas to South Carolina, my <clears> freshman <throat> year of high school. So I personally hated life and everybody in it. Cause I didn't want to leave when I was 14 years old and yeah. go to high school somewhere where I never had lived and didn't know anybody. You love Texas too. <laughs> well, I'm a Texan. Yes. I mean like I bleed blue. I love the Cowboys. You should know that right up front. Like I, <sighs> It stars we just everywhere lost here. Some potential followers because of this. <laughs> I love the Cowboys. I love Mexican food, Tex Mex oh, specifically, Jesus. and and authentic Mexican food. I just felt food, the Lord come into the room when you said um, that. We have loads of family and friends and lots of history in Dallas and everything. Yeah. But we moved my freshman year of high school, yeah. and that is how I met. It was just you know by. Well, you could say it was of the Lord, maybe, but... 100%. It, for me, it was all the Lord, because the <laughs> second I... Look, I, I did not... Let me just say, I did not say this when I heard it, but I was I was raised in a spirit-filled home. I heard the voice of the Lord, very musical, at church, Wednesdays, Saturdays, Sundays, Sunday nights. So we were in the presence of God, and we knew how to hear the voice of the Lord. And the second I saw Summer, this is the truth, 14 years old, the Holy Spirit says, that's your wife. And I was at least mature enough at that point not to come tell you that, right? This is true. <laughs> but I knew immediately, okay, I am looking at my wife. And I Are was you 14. sure it wasn't just, oh, that's a new girl? You were the new girl, but I was also new. We were in high school. We were, we were 14 years old. We were babies. And you were the new girl. And the Holy Spirit said, that's your wife. And I, and I uh, only really had eyes for you after that point. So I was definitely not thinking that way. No. And it's wild that I was, but nonetheless, the Lord provided a way for us to be together a little bit. My brother was dating a, a girl at your parents on your parents' worship team. She was leading worship, and my yeah. brother was dating her, and I would just tag along. And 
That's how the great love story began is a youth group. Two years, our first two years of high school, we were not anything. No, we were just friends. Just, you know, knew each other existed, really. It just happened that our lockers were next to each other because of your maiden name and my, our last name was just literally. The end of our junior year, towards the end of our junior year. Yeah. Is when we officially got together. So we have, you know, the old school junior and senior prom photos. Is that old school? We literally have those photos. We have them. Um, Should we share some of those online? Yeah, I think you have to pay for a membership to get those. You have to subscribe to the Patreon (laughs) or something to get access to that. But we have the prom (laughs) pictures. Um, Yeah, we did. um, We got engaged when we were 19. Yeah. I got married when we were 20. Yes. Uh, Graduated college, 22. Um, Had our first kid when we were 26. Um, We moved back to Texas from South Carolina a couple of years after being married. Yeah. At that point, just working in corporate, you were at the hospital working and I was just... College degrees. In logistics. We were pretty set on... (laughs) We knew that we would always do music in some capacity because we love it. We love writing. We love playing. We love Jesus, just all of it. Um, But we didn't want to do it for our full-time job as our mainstream of income. We wanted the security basically of having regular jobs, you know, went to college, had the comfort of the jobs and then just do music on the side. This was our grand Plan. Our grand plan was and, be safe. You know, honestly, it worked for a while. Yeah. We were comfortable in our twenties. That's the story of our twenties. Really, we started having kids later, but um, we worked in corporate in our twenties and yeah. volunteered at church. Yeah, yeah. Go when, ahead. We, when we moved to Texas, kind of that was like the first time we were like we heard the call of the Lord. It wasn't to go on staff anywhere. It no, was no, no. to. Moved to Texas, and um, we were praying about maybe going to a Bible college, taking a year off from work, and just pursuing God. And turned out yeah. your, your parents actually got a job offer in Texas. So the timing was perfect. They moved. We moved with them. Yeah. Just served them. And I played on your parents' worship team from the time I was 16 years old on. Like, yeah. So we moved to Texas, and we just served their worship team at the church. They went and found jobs out there and just moved our life. It was fun. Yeah. So we kept doing corporate stuff for the rest of our 20s. Yeah. Started at, when we started having kids, we just started having this nudge of like, okay, we love the comfort of what we're doing, but we really don't have a solid community in any church because we just sort of contracted yeah. out and played and led at different places for different things. And we had lots of connections and friendships, but no actual like grounded community. Yeah. We didn't mention like the whole time we're volunteering playing music. And then I started contracting playing music in Dallas at a lot of different churches, a higher gun playing whatever instrument I was hired to play on the weekends. Yeah. So, and so we decided we wanted to find a church to plug into, to really cultivate that community because it was such an integral part of our childhood growing up, having, you know, just the church friends and the youth group and the regular encounters with the Lord. And so we wanted that for our kids. And so we sort of shifted our um, mindset and we're like, okay, let's find a place to really put in some roots and plug in. And so um, God highlighted a place really quickly for us there in Dallas. It was actually a church plant. And we were like, oh, this could be fun. Like, being a part of something from the ground up and um, really just being, you know, rooted in the community. Yeah. And so we, we did, we dove in there and, you know, within a year we were volunteering and Mm -hmm. um, well, the first year we were volunteering and then within a year we were, you know, in leadership capacity. And (laughs) as we got to the age of 30, we really felt the drawing of the Lord, um, just an invitation, really not like it wasn't a pressure. And like, that's the gentleness and the kindness of the Lord is it's never like a guilt. It was just like this never ending drawing and wooing of, Hey, you sing about 
giving me your whole heart or you sing about living your whole life and laying your life down, but you're actually not walking that out because what you've created is this comfort plan of your own and you just fit me in when it feels comfortable. Right. Oh, wow. And that like wasn't our intention, but it was really what we had done. And he'll let you do that. You know, like that's again, like his gentleness and kindness as he lets you do it. And he still will meet you where you're at, even if it's not like his ultimate highest plan for you. So it was just this fork in the road for us to say, hey, I'll keep blessing you and meeting you where you are. Or if you want to go ahead and actually lay your life down and give your whole heart to me, this could be a different story. And so we said yes to that. And that was at the time when we were 30, took our first part-time staff position. Yeah. And that's sort of when our journey started in ministry, you know, going like this um, on the mountain of ministry. It was a it was a day by day, moment by moment, kind of drawing and wooing of the Lord because we both got words about doing what we're doing today when we were kids, right? And we talked about that as we were getting engaged, and we were like, it also it was just something we had in common. It's like I was getting prophetic words from the time I was three or four or five years old about music and the things I'd be doing for the ministry, and same with you, and and they were really kind of similar. Uh, and that didn't stop ever. So it was like we knew the Lord was calling us and had called us. So we were like, our version of what that would look like is what we were committed to. Yeah. We were like, of course we'll serve the Lord with music. It is our joy. We love music. We'll we'll volunteer at our church. We'll serve whatever they need. And it was never um, uh, the Levitical thing of it's like, all right, he wanted all of us. He wanted our life dedicated to the temple. He wanted our life dedicated to serving in his house. Yeah. Um, and we didn't really fully understand that that's really what he wanted and was calling us into. And until we were, you know, older, a little older in our 20s and 30. And um, it was a it was a step by step thing. And like little by little, we were saying yes to laying certain things down. Right. Yeah. As he would draw. And that's like when you look back, you can always see so closely, like how the Lord orchestrates things that when you're in it, it just feels so chaotic and crazy, but it was just a slow process with him. And he let us go at our own pace. And it was like, we, you know, we started out part time and then, you know, I started working less and less at the hospital till I wasn't working at all. And then he led you to sell your business that you had at the time. And that was, you know, that was definitely not on the table for us. Like that was like, okay. Cause the particular business that you had allowed us, we could travel, when we needed, we could take, you know, off when we needed for church events or for staff things. Like it didn't yeah. control our time at all. So in our minds, we were like, oh, we can totally keep doing this right. and pursue this stuff with the Lord. Well, in a lot of ways, what we were doing in our late 20s, um, like my job, it was like a dream job. It was, I remember doing what I was doing on my laptop and cell phone and finishing something up right before we had to pray and get on stage and lead worship. And so I was able to, in my head, manage and control things that way. I could provide the lifestyle I wanted for my family and still get to have one foot in on the ministry side. And yeah, and so the Lord, that was a big thing when the Lord asked us to sell that business and go all in on music, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just another step. Like it, it, it was just I would say that was the, one of the bigger steps we had to make because it was such security. It was um our our safety net. It was our bread and butter for years. 8 years we did that and <clears throat> The funny thing is though, is it was like how many times he's asked us to do that over and over since. Yeah. So that's like <laughs> a thing that you know I'll just encourage you like what seems big to you at the moment, you're like, oh, you know, I'm so glad I passed that, you know, that bump in the road or like got over, you know, through the other side. It's like only, (laughs) only it seems like you look back, it's like, oh. And then two years later, I had somehow ended up back in the same place where we had some level of comfort and something else. And the Lord's like, oh, hey. Hey. But you kind of did it again. And now you're really comfortable with this thing. So, can you give that to me? Because I really just want you to be fully dependent on me, no matter what it is that he's asking you to give up, you know? Yeah. 
So it is like this <clears throat> journey through our thirties of just becoming completely dependent. So yeah, selling companies, moving across the country yeah. another time from Dallas to North Carolina, trusting the Lord, going all in on ministry and music and you know, getting into traveling as worship leaders. And so it, it all was incremental, but over the course of years he faithfully kinda like held our hand, brought us from being one foot in, one foot out into now we're all in doing ministry, but but we have a staff role. And then from North Carolina here to Atlanta, it was leaving the staff role. And um, we, we almost kind of tried to undo some things coming here to Atlanta to go back to work. And the Lord's like, no, no, no. Every job you take, this is a word, legit word from a prophet we got. Every job you take is going to be a whale and you'll be Jonah. And that'll swallow you up and spit you back out. You're meant to be in ministry. Stop taking other jobs. Yeah. That was wild. Yeah. I, I sort of had to wrestle that one out with the Lord because I'm like, <laughs> we can totally do all of this that you're asking us to do and do this other stuff. Like we're fully capable of that. Yeah. And he's like, but that's the whole thing is you're capable of that. I want you to live this life doing things that you're not capable of doing at all so that it can fully display my glory. Yeah. Like when you're living this life of complete dependency on him, there's no question that you're not reflecting the glory of Jesus in yeah. his face. Yeah. And it's, so it's our, it's our, <clears throat> as we're unpacking, even what daily bread is to us, it's the name of our podcast. It's the name of our online prayer room. It's the name of our all, ministry. Our ministry It's the name of like, it's everything about what we're doing with the Lord in this season. And we're realizing the last several years have been baby steps towards learning what daily bread is, learning who he is as daily bread and getting us from, uh, from all the way from Texas to North Carolina here now in Atlanta and, uh, in and out of these seasons of like having some stability and then him saying, come out a little bit farther onto the water. Trust me with everything. Yeah. And over and over we do it and we say yes, because we, we're committed to them. We're like, we're all in, right? Yeah. Well, when you've gone <clears throat> this far and um, yeah, I just feel like you hit certain spots in your life where you've gone this far, you're like, <clears throat> it would make no sense um, to do anything different. Yeah. The opportunity's always there and the goodness of God is he'll always meet you, you know, where you're at, but living your life completely dependent on him is um a free it's a new revelation of freedom yeah. because we actually weren't meant to carry the load and the weight and the burden of understanding of making plans of executing plans of of navigating um you know the twists and turns of the unknown it's like we were yeah. just made to sit at his feet and keep our eyes on him. That's actually how you walk on the water is to keep your eyes on him. Yeah. And when your eyes are fixed on him, then he tells you when to turn, when to stop, when to walk, when to sit, when to yeah. go low, when to, you know, everything he leads you and you're never thrown off. You don't ever have to figure anything out. Yeah. It's like we spend so much time trying to figure stuff out. Yeah. And, so it's, it's so, I don't know, we're 39 now, you know, and I'm like, okay, we're in our last year. And to think how far we've come, just not only, you know, literally in our life with having kids and our marriage and moving and just the different chapters of that, but just in our journey with Jesus and what it means to walk and talk with him in the everyday, in the mundane, he's woven into everything. Mm. That's real life. It is. And walking that out in every single part of your life mm. is never done unfolding. Yeah. That's like you so never reach the <clears throat> other side of that. That's like. You never really arrive. No, that's the whole thing. So. He's in the journey. We'll be unpacking yeah. that that's throughout what, this whole podcast. That's <laughs> really like, we didn't even mention that. This podcast is really to unpack that that who he is, who he, who we've become, who we're becoming, 
but really who he is and the things he's teaching us and how that relates to sure our life and ministry. And we've seen a lot. We've been a lot of places. We've done a lot of traveling and we've seen a lot of how to do things and how not to do things. We've learned a ton just from being around a lot of different types of people, a lot of different streams of the body of Christ, a lot of different leadership styles. We've We've gathered a lot of intel, right, behind yep. the scenes. And so we'll unpack as much of that as makes sense and the wisdom that we feel like we've garnered because of our travels. And and really just we hope to serve the creatives, right, and the body of Christ and beyond. And this, it's fun. Like, yeah. it's wild and crazy. And there's, you know, days that are filled with tears because it is scary. But it's so fun. It's so much more fun than just having such a regimented you know, same kind of thing every single day. It's like life with Jesus is a complete mystery. Yeah. All you know is every day you're going to get up and you're going to meet him face to face. He's going to lead you throughout the day. So we have, we're going to have guests on here talking about what it looks like to live the life of the daily bread and walking with Jesus. And it's crazy. It's fun, but it is like nothing else that you will ever do in your life. And it's, how we were meant to live. Yeah. We were, we were made. You sing this a lot to yeah. walk on water Yeah, with him to step out and join him on the water. And what's fun for us is we get to do this with our kids along. It gets gnarly. Like we're not going to lie to you. This life is it's faith and it's risk and it's crazy. And um, sometimes it looks crazy to people and uh, sometimes it feels crazy to us, but it's, it's the only way we want to live with him to depend on him for everything. And because even when we had our business and you were at the hospital, we had seasons of highs and lows and abundance and lack. And we've, it's the way when, when Paul says he can do all things through Christ, it's he can do all of that and still do it with Christ. That gives him strength. He can be rich or poor or sick or healthy. And he does all things through Christ. He yeah. gives him strength. And, um, and so that's that's the journey. That's what we want to talk about. And our kids are along for the ride. And we'll share tons of stories about how they've even input into some of the decisions we're making in faith because God speaks to them. Yeah. And so this is this is about family. It's about uh, it's about creativity. It's about connect being so connected to the source um, that we that everything that comes out of us is an overflow of just this intimate connection that we have with them. Right. And so we hope to like influence the body of Christ in that way of saying, hey, we are connected to the source of all creativity. The stuff we're putting out to the world needs to be amazing because he's amazing. Right. It should be what the, the anything that we're putting out creatively should be influencing everything else that is being put out yeah. instead of, you know, like the Christian industry coming underneath the other umbrellas to try and fit in. It's like, we just want to reset that whole thing. And it's like, we are hardwired to be like him. We're created in his image and everything that we create is of it's from him. It's through him and it's back to him. Mm. And that should be actually defining all creative, like all creative things coming out. And so, we're excited to be a part of whatever that looks like and for our part in that story. But it's just, it really is. That's a lot of big words just to say it's, that's, it's simple. Yeah. Like we really just want to have guests on here and just between us, like talking about how simple it is yeah. to live a life in love with Jesus and walking it out in real life scenarios hard great sometimes we do it well and some days we fail some days i do it but at the end of the day yeah jesus loves me i love jesus and i'm gonna sit at the table and i'm gonna eat the daily bread Mm, come on and so we're super excited yeah and we've got we've got an album that we're working on too we're gonna share some of the songs some of the lyrics some of the whys behind we're doing that um We've got a few more minutes here on this first episode, and we'll share a lot about fashion too, right? That's one of your passion hot topics. Maybe. Maybe. It might weave in there. It will. I'll make sure it weaves in there. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, we just want to, 
just kind of to recap before we close out this session, we are here in Atlanta now. We are very much active in ministry, although it looks different um, than any other season in our life to date. We are not on staff at a church, but we are uh, kind of supported by a few different churches and donors, and um, I think they called us like mun- musicianaries. Like it's a new kind of model I think we're pioneering into is the word of the Lord when we moved here was move to Atlanta, sing over the city, right? Yeah. And we'll unpack that later, what that really means to us to sing over city. And then, and then probably the next episode, I think we'll get in a little bit of that. But um, so we're here in Atlanta. We're worshiping, singing from our home over the city. We're doing daily breads online. We've been doing those for three years now. Yeah. Yep. Since 2020. Yeah, those are one of the favorite things that we do. Um, and the Lord just said, "Stay consistent with that, and I'll provide for your needs." Yeah. So we've been online, and we've we've gotten messages from all around the world: Germany, South Africa, Canada, Texas, because Texas is beautiful. That people are tuning in and watching those. So uh, if you haven't checked that out, do it's every Tuesday night, eight p.m. on our YouTube channel at Sheely Music. Um, we serve our local church here. We're at Bethel, Atlanta. We serve them. Uh, we love the worship there. We love the community there that we're building. We are writing for an album. We're about to release a project later on this year uh, that's going to be very special to us. Yeah. Uh, so we're hot and heavy in the early stages of that. And we're gathering here in our home locally. That's one of your favorite things, isn't it? Yes. I... I love um, gathering even outside of the church. I love doing things inside the church, obviously. Mm -hmm. We'll always, I mean, that'll always be a part Mm -hmm. of what we do. I love gathering people to just feast together around a table. And then also to like feast with the Lord. There's something special about gathering together yeah outside of the church building yeah and communing and dining and then hanging out with the lord Mm. and it's just doing life with people so i love the opportunity of going into cities and being able to do that outside of a church setting so we're pioneering that here in our own city um first and foremost in atlanta greater atlanta area yeah um and we're so excited. We're having first worship night this month, actually. Um, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Ooh. And we'll just see how the Lord leads. What does a unified <laughs> sound from the body of Christ worshiping over their city, what does that sound like? And what effects might it have in the spirit and beyond over a city? So yeah, we're really passionate about that here in Atlanta. We love it here. We we love the friends we're making here now. And I would just say it's another iteration in our story of the Lord saying, hey, come out a little bit farther on the water, trust me. And we just keep saying yes, because we're a little bit crazy, but we're crazy in love with Jesus. And yeah, this is the way we want to live. I think, um, you know, a lot of times we get a word from the Lord and we finish out the word Yeah, and then everything we do is unto the finishing of that word. And then when it doesn't work out, like you think Mm -hmm. we then get jaded or frustrated with the Lord, like he didn't come through or he didn't do what he said he was going to do or things never work out or he's not faithful, you're not good. All of these things that we wrestle, real thoughts. No matter how much you love Jesus, you have these questions and these thoughts. And the Lord has had us on this journey, daily bread of just like, I actually didn't say this. I only said this Mm -hmm. and I did do this, but you finished it out. (laughs) And time and time again, the Lord will bring me back to that. Yeah. We said a little bit earlier, it's like, I don't know if this is something you ever arrive at. This is like, because time and time again, the Lord's like, hold on, you did it again. Like I said this, but you said you decided what that actually meant. And so it's like, 
undoing your mind, literally yeah. how it works. It's like we yeah. almost sometimes are subconsciously doing it and we don't know it. And the Lord is so kind and so patient to just keep going back. Oh, but hey, you did it again. It's okay. But hey, you did it again. It's okay. You know, and I'm like thinking about that with my kids where I'm like, I tell them not to do something like three or four times. And then by the fifth time, I look like Corella DeVille. You know, I'm like, ah, you're not hearing me. And I'm like, do you not hear anything I'm saying? And you feel crazy and you start. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my like mouth? Feeling like you're losing yourself. Yes. And the Lord's like. Oh, but hey, you kind of do that too. Yes, Lord. Yeah, you kind of do. do that too with me. And I just, you know, yeah. gently remind you. And you're like, oh, this is true. So then, you know, of course, you like repent to your kids. Yeah. But the Lord will use just everyday things like that in your life to like show you a mirror image of something that he's doing in you. So that it is then so relatable. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yep, that's exactly what I'm doing. Oh, man. So... Just taking those, he gives us, he's a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. Yeah. He's not a floodlight. Like he's not lighting up the forest. It is a lamp you to your feet <laughs> and a light into your path. Amen. So it's like just enough to keep moving. Yeah. And that's what faith is. Yeah. Faith isn't a feeling. Faith is a step. Yeah. Faith isn't finishing out the whole story. It's literally a step. And that's what he gives us. Yeah. He gives us daily bread. It's just the light on the path and yeah. the lamp on your feet so you can see your feet and know where to take your next step. Yeah. And so we are, that is our, that's our that's journey. It. So <laughs> thank you so much for sticking with us through this first episode where we got to introduce you to ourselves, we yes. are the Sheelys. And you'll just keep finding out so much more. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> we're literally gonna unpack so much about creativity and the body of Christ and the industry, music, business side of things. Like we, we could get into all of that. What it's like to be married, Marriage, and work together, family. and really constantly do every single thing together. It's your favorite. <laughs> Looking at me all day, every day. <laughs> we, we don't go about doing the anything the same exact way, pretty much the opposite way on anything, we'd approach it differently. And yeah. learning how to navigate that as a husband and wife in ministry for as long as we have, how to bring our kids into this, how to involve them in the process as we travel a lot and we worship a lot around the world. Um, so yeah, all of this, all of our mistakes are our free gift to you <laughs> so you can avoid the pitfalls or just anything that we've done. So Thank you for listening tonight or whenever you're watching this. Um, it's been our joy to come do this. We're Look, excited. Looking forward to this. Bye. Hey, guys. Hey thank on. you for joining us and listening in. Yeah, I really hope you liked it. And if you'd like more content like this in the future, uh, would love for you to consider supporting our ministry. We would love to produce a lot more content and keep it all free. So if you're interested, head over to sheelyworship.com slash support to find out more. Thank you, guys.